Today, I knocked 22 seconds off my PB on that course. I ran at 18.25 and I think it was down to this shoe. This is very quick and it was my first ever park run win. Hi, I'm Chris, that running guy. And I got a really exciting shoe to share with you. It's a shoe that you probably never heard of. It's a full carbon plate race shoe. It's the 361 Flame. And you're thinking, I've never heard of 361. They're from China, they've been around for many years. And the last couple of years, they've moved into Europe. 361, their tagline is one degree beyond which kind of makes sense. So what is this shoe like? How did I find it on my 10 mile run today that I put it through its paces from 8.10 all the way down to 5.56 per mile? So this is their answer to a carbon plate lightweight racer. Comes in at 150 pounds. I have seen it online for about 140. So let's just give you some basic stats about the shoe, starting from the top. It's made from similar material so there was on the Vaporfly Next Percent, this mono mesh material, very light, 218 grams in a size nine, I believe. Comes in at 258 grams in a size 11 UK. If we put that into comparison, my Socony Endorphin Pro 2 comes in at 250. Has an eight millimeter drop, 32 in the heel, 24 in the front. Looks like it's got about 40, but the shoe sits quite low down in there. Got a well cushioned pad that runs all the way around. Reasonably flexible at the top, but quite hard at the bottom. And that's why it probably needs that kind of protective foam. Has a tongue that helps pressure on the top of your foot. You need to actually get that, you know, straight before you lock it down. How's the lockdown? Pretty good, but you do have to faff around, kind of put in the laces from the bottom all the way up. Laces are way too long. Probably the longest laces I've ever seen. Probably best to change them. I had to free knot them and tuck them in. Uh, the inner sole is probably the thinnest inner sole that I've ever seen. Didn't have any problems on the run with blisters, but I probably will change that to something a bit thicker. The sole, got rubber where it needs it. You can actually see that full carbon plate that's in there and the foam. A very similar looking to Piba phone that's on the Socony Endorphin 2. It's, but this is pelletized uh, PU foam. And it, being pelletized, this knocks all the weight down. Size wise, it's true to size. I'm a size 11 in Nike and 11 in this shoe. Right, so how did it feel on the run? And the ride, if we was to compare kind of cushioning, compare it to my Zoom Fly 3, kind of the React foam with the carbon plate. The only difference I would say that because this has got kind of a lesser stack height at the front and at the rear, that you can feel a bit of kind of road feel. So it is more of that traditional kind of racing shoe. At the slower paces, you can feel it's a bit harder in the heel area, especially in the kind of bally foot towards the back. And that's why I think a thicker inner cell may help. Traction was fantastic. Stability was great. Going through the different paces, once I got into my kind of tempo pace which is 710 and below the shoe felt a lot better and then kind of wanting you to just run in this area and you don't feel this front quarter because when you hit obviously you kind of transition off it's not a smooth transition as say the endorphin pro 2 but a very kind of lightweight nice pop snappy ride um, does feel very lightweight on foot i'd say it feels maybe lighter than the endorphin 2 although it's not once i Took it down to my 5k pace, which was 5.56 per mile, the shoe come alive. It felt that's where it was, you know, at home. So basically I'd finished this video and I've just run a 5k time trial at my normal park run that I do when I want to do a time trial. And last week I run in my Endorphin Pro 2, I'm on at 18.48. And love that shoe. Yes, it's probably not the quickest 5k shoe, but that had equal to my parkrun PB that I'd set in the Zoomfly uh, SPs. You know sometimes when you have shoes and you wore, we wear them for the first time and you can't wait to run them again. And it's not many shoes that you kind of get that feeling where you're, you know, you can't wait to put them on and you're excited. I knew this was gonna be a 5k shoe 
and wasn't sure if I'd be able to take it any further than that because of how hard the heel was. But since changing the inner soles, it's transformed the shoe. I think it's a shoe that I could run further distance in. in. I don't think it's a shoe if you're a full on heel striker that hit this kind of back quarter, they'll work for you. But if you are someone like me, you know, hits here and transition to the front, it's absolutely fine. So this time trial, I thought this felt like a quick shoe. Um, I'd say from here, there's a good drop off. You can feel that carbon plate and it really feels like it kind of pushes you forward. Today, I knocked 22 seconds off my PB on that course, around 18.25. And I think it was down to this shoe. This is very quick. And it was my first ever park run win, which, you know, I haven't won a race since I was, you know, I was a teenager, so that's nice. I know it's not a race, it's only park run, but it's still nice, isn't it? So on the run, what was the difference? Well, I found this shoe to be more poppier, if that's even a word, it just more propulsion. As I say, the, the Endorphin Pro, you know, fantastic shoe, more cushioning, probably more designed for kind of 10K and 5K. My cadence was more or less the same in both shoe. Uh, my stride length in the Endorphin Pro 2 was 1 meter 52, in this 155. So it does give you a little bit more kind of stride length. I felt my form was good in it. I felt that uh, it was, you know, economically running and I was able to actually negative split. So my, I run an 18.25. I put uh, the kilometer times up here. I think the first mile was uh, 5.58, which I wanted to go through. 5.50. 5, 5.51 and then closed in a 5.05. So this shoe is awesome. I say once I've changed that inner sole and put in a Nike inner sole, this shoe is amazing and highly recommend it. So my final thoughts on the shoe, if you are a full on hill striker, probably still clear of it. If you're someone like me, kind of hits towards this kind of back edge and transitions or you're a four foot or kind of mid foot, with a change of inner sole, you don't really get as much road feel as before, but this is a really fast shoe and definitely a shoe that you should consider. Yes, this class is a budget shoe, you know, it's still expensive at 150 pounds, but it's not 210, you know, for a Vaporfly, which new, let's be fair, not everyone gets on with because of how soft the Zoomix is. So this is a shoe you should definitely give a go. I say one week later and I'm not 22 seconds off my PB. So have you tried it? Let me know down in the comments and as per always, onwards and upwards. Cheers!